Shoot him. 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 Shoot him.
Yes, sir. He was writing up a DD-5 for me. Ask him where it is when he rings in or when you see him. Yes, I'll be in my office. Is this chair all right, Lieutenant? Yeah, that's fine. Well, uh, the reason I wanted to see now, you... Just a second. I've got one thing to write down before I forget. Oh, just yes, Good on names and faces, but figures escape me. All right. Well, as I told you, I'm representing Joe Creedy. Where is he? Down at the tombs? No, he's out on bail. He made 5000 bail? The court reduced it to 2000 His mother scraped up $100 for the bondsman. Mm-hmm. Where is he now? He's been staying at home. Haven't seen him around? Well, I advised him to stay pretty close to the house and not get mixed up with that crowd again. He'd only make things worse for himself. Good advice. Think he's taking it? I think he is. He's got a job? Well, it's pretty hard for a boy awaiting trial on a burglary indictment to get steady work, but... He's picking up a few odd jobs here and there. Like what? Well, he told me he was doing some messenger work downtown. And, mm-hmm. and he's got a cousin who does some hauling out in Long Island City. He's been helping him out when he needs help. Want to stick gum? No. Oh, thanks. Comes up on the 20th, huh? Yeah. What do you want from me? Joe would like to talk to you, Lieutenant. About what? Well, the fact of the matter is I'm trying to get the district attorney to recommend a suspended sentence. I've convinced Joe that the only way he can get it is to be of some help to you. We collared him in the act of committing a burglary. He had plenty of opportunity to tell me everything he knew then. Didn't say a word. Well, I uh, suppose the closer the day comes, the more cooperative he feels. Hmm. When I talked to him, he sure must have thought the penitentiary was a million years away because he didn't feel cooperative at all. Wouldn't tell me the right time of day. You see, I knew those boys had been stealing his blind in his precinct. Cop caught him inside the place. He had two other boys with him. He wouldn't say a word about them or about anything he'd been involved in before. That kid has been into more flats than a paper hanger. Lieutenant, he's got something more on his mind than those burglaries. Hmm? What? I don't know exactly. Hmm. Don't think he does either, Mr. Hodgson. He's looking for a cheap way to save himself a couple of years. They're all alike, these kids. They look you straight in the face and lie like demons. He's not a kid anymore. He's 20 years old. Oh, well, another year he can vote. I have an idea that what he wants to talk about is a homicide case. That he was involved in? Not going to talk about a homicide case to get a suspended sentence on a burglary indictment. But not that he was involved in, that he knows about. If he wants to talk about it, tell him to come and see me. Well, that's just the point, Lieutenant. I tried to get him to come with me. He won't. That's what convinces me he's really got something on his mind. I think he's a little bit frightened. I'll tell you, Mr. Hudson, it's all part of the act. The bigger he can make it sound, the better chance he thinks he's got. Will you go to see him? If I'm around the neighborhood there, I might drop in. I'll see him. I wish I could generate a little more enthusiasm. So do I. Well, I'm sorry I couldn't interest you more. I've seen this happen a million times. Sorry to take up your time. That's what I'm here for. Don't blame you. It's your job. Do the best you can for your client. If you get a chance, you will see him. Yeah, sure. If I get the chance, I might drop in on him. See what he has to say. That's all I can ask for, but uh, you better make it before the 20th. He might not be around after that. All right, if I can. But believe me, you've got to discount these things 95%. Yes, yeah, I suppose so. Well, I'll see you again sometime, Lieutenant. Yeah, I'll so very soon. Listen, Ted. Yes, sir. You remember that boy, Joe Creedy, the one we jumped up in the act of burglarizing a flat down there on uh, 73rd Street, I think? Yes, sir, I remember. Get his address out of the car. Yes, sir. What is this stuff you're working on? A bunch of disposition of defendant forms. What are you, detective or bookkeeper? It's what I'd like to know, Lieutenant. All right, get it cleaned up. I think we're going to have a heavy night. On what, Lieutenant? I don't know exactly. But that creedy boy thinks it's enough to get him off the hook. If it is enough, it's good and heavy. As a result of what he had heard from the attorney who visited him... At 6.15 p.m., Lieutenant King, along with Detective Fitzpatrick, left the station house and drove the squad car to 2nd Avenue, found the address they were looking for, and stopped. 
Detective Fitzpatrick was instructed to wait in the car while Lieutenant King went into the entrance to a tenement, looked at the mailbox, and walked up the stairs to the third floor.
I told them what it was and so forth. They took it all in. Were they drunk? No, I wouldn't say they were drunk. They had a few drinks apiece. They were feeling good. What do they want you to go into? Well, it wasn't mentioned right off. I told them I didn't know if I'd be interested because I was in a big jam already. And besides, I told them I never did any of that heavy stuff. I, I didn't want to hurt anybody. Well, how'd you know it was heavy stuff? You said they didn't mention it right off. No, they didn't mention it, no, but they sort of intimated around, you know. Then they dropped the subject after you said you weren't interested? Yeah. And they pick it up again? Later. Same night, Tuesday? Yeah. How did that come about? Well, we decided to go downtown to have a drink together, uh, to the village. They had a car, and I went with them. On the way down, they stopped in front of a hotel, and one of them said, uh, uh, Woody, I think it was. He said they had a friend staying there, and they'd go in and see if he'd come have a drink, too. So they both got out of the car, and I waited in there. A few minutes later, they come out and get in the car, and we take off. They're laughing so loud they can hardly drive, so I ask them, what's the matter? They say they just stuck up the hotel, the night clerk. But what time was it? Well, about 1 o'clock or one thirty, I guess. Wednesday morning? Yeah. Where was this hotel? Well, I don't know exactly. It was over on the west side in the 60s, I think. Uh, just off Broadway there. Then you went on downtown, had some more to drink with him? Yeah. How long did you stay with him? Oh, about an hour more, I guess. I was a little sore about him laying me open on a deal like that, just sitting in the car. They thought it was a great big joke on me. Hmm. Would have been if you got collared. You're telling me. You stayed with them an hour. What did they do then, drive you home? No, they wanted to stay there, and I told them I had to get home. They said they'd like to see me again, so we made a date for the next night. That was last night? Yeah. When? That joint there, down in the village. And you went? Yeah, I didn't have anything better to do. You, uh, you weren't thinking about going into the deal with them, were you, Joe? Well, to tell you the truth, Lieutenant, I, I did think a little bit about it. At least it must have been in the back of my mind. Otherwise, I don't guess I would have had anything to do with him. What happened last night? Nothing. We just stayed there and drank. Well, what's this about their being right for a homicide? Well, I don't know for sure. You see, this Woody started to say something about the guy they shot up in a hotel job, and Fred shut him up quick. Mm. Were they healed? Guns, you mean? Yeah. Well, I guess they were. They must have had him to stick up that hotel, don't you think? What time is your date to meet them tonight? How'd you know I had a date to meet him tonight? Figures, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess so. 10.30. Where, at the same bar downtown? No, they said they'd pick me up in the car. At your house? No. On Fifth Avenue, right by that museum there. Uh, the Metropolitan. Why is that? I don't know. That's what they said. Meet them there. I guess they want to come through the park there and go right downtown. He said one of them is named Woody. What's the rest of his name? Oh, that's all I know. He never said his other name. And Fred? Fred Hans. Where did they live? Exactly, you mean? I, I don't know. They never said. Over on the west side there. I know they eat in those restaurants up on Broadway in the 70s and 80s. That's what they said anyway. I, I don't know exactly. Well, I guess it doesn't make any difference. They won't be there long anyway. Lieutenant King took Joe Creedy and returned to the station house with him. There he made plans to arrest the two men when they arrived at the corner of 5th Avenue and the 86th Street Transverse through Central Park at 10.30 that night. In order to keep them off their guard, Joe Creedy consented to wait on the corner as had been arranged. Detectives on foot would be placed in strategic positions. Lieutenant King picked for himself and Detective Fitzpatrick a doorway across Fifth Avenue, almost directly opposite the meeting place, and with a clear view of the entire area down to the massive steps and columns of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. At 10.20, Joe Creedy, on instructions from Lieutenant King, crossed Fifth Avenue and took his place on the corner. The detectives watched. Fifteen minutes later, they were still watching and waiting. That kid dreamed all this up. They can throw away the key for all I care, Lieutenant. It's cold out here. Yeah. Well, who serves coffee to the poor detectives on a night like this, huh? No gray ladies in sight, no volunteers, nobody. All right, hold it. There's a car coming through. Stop it. 
Stay back. Yeah. Each step. Yeah. Following instructions. He's stalling them. Yeah.
Five Hearts Racing, Sergeant Waters. Yeah, that's right. We want an ambulance up here. At the station house. What? Yeah, an injured, an injured prisoner. Well, who gave it to you? CB? We got no name on him yet. Well, how soon will it be here? And when? so it goes. Around the clock, through the week, every day, every year. A police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh and blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring. Or the brass ring can catch anyone. 21st Precinct transcribed. The factual account of the way the police work in the world's largest city is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolman's Benevolent Association, an organization of more than 20,000 members of the police department, City of New York. Everett Sloan in the role of Captain Kennelly. Ken Lynch as Lieutenant King. Harold Stone as Sergeant Waters. Featured in tonight's cast were Lawson Zerby, Bill Zuckert, Bryna Rayburn, William Redfield, and George Petrie. Written and directed by Stanley Niss. Gaylord Avery speaking.